Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 225 of the UFO Buster Radio News Report. And it is the day after the first ever Dark Horde author spotlight episode. And I'm pretty excited about it. Listen, you know, uh, here's the thing. A lot of people think, you know, man, Moon Records, he's going to come on and he's going to get these authors, he's going to charge them all up. I'm not going to do that. I mean, I mean, I at least need to let them get their, uh, get their, uh, I don't know, get their groove on. Talk about their, their books. Talk about what they need to talk about. Because that's important. Why the fuck else would I have them on here? It's a blue collar thing. Stop fucking around. It's, it's okay. It's okay. I, I like for them to talk about their stuff and show their passion. Leon Beebe showed that passion towards the end of the podcast, believe it or not, because he was like banging on the desk, wherever the hell he, wherever the hell he was at, he was banging on it. He like the Baghdad fucking battery. This, I mean, I really wanted to tell him, hey, it's okay if you drop an F-bomb once in a while. This is UFO Buster Radio. It's not coast to fucking coast. But I was respectful because I know, I know he's got a book. He's got two. He's got a third one coming. He's got Ancient Aliens coming up. So you know what? He, he's he got to stay in line. He doesn't want these uh, cable people to like drop him like a, uh, you know, like a fucking cat on a hot tin roof. He doesn't want that. He wants to make his mark. He wants to be Leon Beebe, the guy who told you the fuck is going on about Ancient Aliens. So I let him do that. As a matter of fact, any author out there who uh, wants to come on here, I will let you do your thing. And unless you said, you know, unless you say something like really crazy, <laughs> I will let you say whatever the fuck you want. I'd rather people just curse. I mean, come on, let's be honest. If I was on here, if I was on here selling you on hydrogen batteries, well, I'm here telling you that the, the world is going to end unless you're driving a fucking car that drives on water, would you believe me more if I was, like, freaking stomping on something or, or banging on a desk and cursing my ass off and, and you actually felt the passion behind it? Of course you would. Stop fucking around. You know you would. Passion trumps, you know, bullshit. Be passionate about it. Some of these billionaires, they did it because they were passionate. They became rich as fuck because they were passionate about what they were doing. They enjoyed it. And they showed him what they were doing. Leon Beebe yesterday showed that he's passionate about it. He's passionate about fucking ancient aliens. And let me tell you, the book is about uh, less than 11 bucks. Buy the fucking book. Because he, he, he wrote it. He put images in it. He got shit in there. He's got evidence for you. He's got research. Who the fuck else talks about chromosomes? I don't recall uh, Stephen Greer talking about chromosomes. I don't recall the guy that we have on this podcast today, as far as news-wise. I don't recall Richard Dolan uh, talking about chromosomes. I don't recall any of them talking about how the fuck there's something wrong with how quickly our genetics mutated. Not one motherfucker out there. Well, maybe another one. I don't know. I don't, I don't listen to every, I don't listen to everybody, folks. That's what you gotta take from this podcast. And people say, "Well, Moonraker, you should research what the fuck you're talking about." I don't need the fucking research. If you're an asshole that put out a fucking uh, a fucking article, or you put out a book, you research that shit. Because I'm gonna talk about the shit you put out. I don't need to freaking uh, uh, contradict what the fuck you're saying. I don't need to. Your work should speak for itself. I want to hear what you're saying. Let the audience determine whether or not you're full of shit. Leon Beebe, which honestly, I I wanted to ask him about the whole Beebe thing, but like I said, he was so passionate about his book, he uh, he really went into what I wanted him to do, and that was tell me who Leon Beebe is. Who Leon Beebe is? How did Leon Beebe get stuck into this ancient alien craziness? And he did. He told you. He told you about his family, as a matter of fact. He told you about the sightings his brothers had, minus one, because one of them passed away. If you couldn't tell that the guy was being honest, he was. And that's the beauty about UFO Buster Radio and Manny Moonrigger is that people don't know how to take me. So, you know, when I ask him a question, they try to be as honest as possible. If you notice, he really then tried to sell the book to almost halfway, three quarters into the podcast. Because I was about who is Leon Beebe. 
I don't give I don't give a shit what you're selling. I don't care what it is. Probes. You selling probes? Great. I could buy probes anywhere. You selling massages? Happy endings? I, okay, great. That's probably the, every other corner in the United States. <laughs> but are you passionate about it? That's the question. Are you passionate about that happy ending? Because if you're not, I sure as hell won't be. If you're not passionate about your book, if you're not passionate about your body of work, I'm not going to give two fucks about it. And in those cases, yeah, I will say something. In those cases, I will go ape shit. But that didn't happen yesterday. And if you are, if, if if I can be totally honest, you've noticed that a lot of people that I interview are not people who are half assing it. There are not people who are just uh, you know talking out of their ass. These are people who have read things, have researched, had some kind of a background in it, in some way, some roundabout way. Leon Beebe had a background in biology, and he's talking shit about it because he saw gaps. He saw things that he couldn't understand. He saw things that made no sense to him, so he had to research it. He had to go out there and find out what is going on. That's why at the end, and I know it sounded a little awkward because I'm sure he, he he felt like, well, I really shouldn't tell his audience that uh, they should be writing books. That's not what he was trying to say. What he was trying to say is basically, if you feel so passionate about something, go out and research it. Go out and find some answers. And chances are you will be so driven by that question, so driven about your skepticism that you yourself will write a fucking book about it. Or ebook for that matter. I don't know. These days you can buy you can freaking write anything and buy anything through uh, the internet. So you basically could uh, write all kinds of shit. I might just do it just for the fuck of it. Yeah, I said it. I might just uh, write a fucking book just for the fuck of it. I, I, I'll probably have every other word's an F word, but that's the way it is. But you're going to feel my passion in that, bitch. I, I guarantee you, you're going to feel some passion coming through there. And that's what we felt with Leon Beebe. And you could hear it. Like, I heard the podcast episode again this morning while I was at the gym working out, pushing that steel. And I could hear him banging on the desk, banging on the table. Back that battery, bastards. Don't you fucking know about this? You can't, uh, you really can't replace that with someone who is a reptilian who is trying to sell you on a movie that he is trying to uh, fund every year for close to a million dollars. There's a big difference in between the two. There really is. Now, uh, do they have some of the same perspectives? Is there something in there that kind of chimes true between all researchers in ufology? Fuck yeah. Of course it does. It's just the same story no matter how you look at it. But some people pour their heart and their soul into it. I mean, granted, the reptilian man, he cried during his last video. I get it. But is that because his pockets were light? Or is it because he really meant that they fucked up his life when they brought him into the UFO story. I don't know. I really don't. But uh, that's up to you to make that decision whether or not these people in ufology are true to what they're selling. To me, Leon Beebe is true to the books he's selling. There's no doubt about it. We had a conversation before. It turns out that uh, he lives not too far from relatives of the Moonraker. It turns out that uh, we kind of went to school in the same area of New York. Well, separated by maybe a, a few miles, but yeah. We we're both kind of northern New Yorker Yankees. That doesn't mean that I'm going to give him more cred than anyone else, but uh, you got to listen to it. Go on there. Go into the Dark Horde author spotlight and listen to Leon Beebe and share it. Because one day you're going to write a book. One day you, who are so caught up on this ufology thing, aliens and probing and all that kind of stuff, one day you are going to say, fuck it, I'm just going to write a book. I mean, hell, it might just be for your grandma. Might be for your kids to know how crazy you were (laughs) to follow aliens and shit. But you know what? You'll have pride in it. It's going to mean something to you and everyone else. Everyone else that knows you is going to know that you wrote a book. Because that shit was driving you bananas.
one of the most famous people in ufology, Richard Dolan. And I'm going to say this right now. And, you know, I think I've said it before in other podcasts. I, I don't follow Richard Dolan. And a lot of people get pissed off about that. He's the real deal, Moonraker. Moonraker, you should follow Richard Dolan. Richard Dolan is the shit. He knows what the fuck he's talking about. I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I, I really don't. I don't follow Richard Dolan, uh, probably because he has better hair than I do, to be honest. He's got that mane going on, that uh, peppered uh, black and gray <laughs> mane. Uh, you know what? I, I don't follow Richard Dolan. I don't follow what he does. But uh, this particular article is everywhere right now, and it seems to be gaining speed. Initially, I want to thank the one and only Ronnie Dawson for bringing this to uh, UBR Troop Seekers. And he actually sent it to me and said, hey, Moonraker, this thing is hitting the shit fan. So you better duck because it might hit you right in the forehead. And you know what I'm talking about. If you've already seen the article, it's a 15 page memo notes or some shit from Vice Admiral Thomas R. Wilson. And and let me tell you, Richard Dolan is losing his shit over this. It's incredible. He's like so giddy about it. I don't know. I've seen more personality in Richard Dolan over this particular memo than anything else I've seen him talk about. <sighs> yeah, so apparently there was a 2002 document that he's uh, peddling on the internet through Imager about a 1997 meeting uh, that Admiral Wilson had with uh, somebody else who was an insider on all things UFO up to that point. I'm not going to... Uh, I really... Uh, Listen, I, I when when I when I when I actually listen to this, I, it's it's actually a, a, a YouTube video. A, a, you got me stuttering uh, because I I almost don't know what to say here. It's a YouTube video, so I I, I put it on my workout machine. I did my workout. I watched it, and uh, basically Richard Dolan goes page by page in this bitch. He will literally break down every page for you in this particular video. The link to the article and the link to the specific video. It's in the description, so you can check it out. Fuck, I did. You should be tortured as well. There is an article that uh, kind of uh, broke this as well. And uh, the name of the website is... Uh, who the fuck cares? <laughs> Don't you just hate that? You know, when you copy and paste it and the shit doesn't show up. Anyway... This particular website uh, has also the link to Imager to the document, but they posted this. If it was anyone else besides Richard Dolan, I wouldn't post this here without much more vetting, but it's Richard Dolan. So it turns out to be fake. Let's get over it. Oh, let's get it over with. Um, yeah, there there is a possibility that this is uh, a lot of rubber digging. Some of you have turned over in your grave just because I said that. And and even more so because I said that about Richard Dolan. Could this be rubber dicking? And let's be honest. Somebody in 2002, which is 17 years ago, <laughs> had a meeting, uh, had a document that they wrote about shit that happened in 1997. My first thing is, who the fuck cares? Yeah. Who the fuck cares? The notes are by Dr. Eric Davis from October 16, 19, uh, I'm sorry, 2002. And who is Eric Davis, according to Richard Dolan? And there's a link here to Richard Dolan's website where he uh, kind of transcripted his whole fucking video for you guys who like to read and don't like to watch, which really watching is a whole lot better. Uh, basically, uh, he says this. Uh, who is Eric Davis? He's a scientist. He uh, but surely qualifies as a very interesting scientist. For many years during the 1990s, he was a member of the National Institute for Discovery Sciences. Hello, my friends. That is Deuce Bigelow's Space Gigolo's number one organization that studies Skinwalker Ranch. Oh, all of a sudden, we've got tie-ins to a whole lot of rubber dicking here. So now this dude... Is involved with Robert Bigelow. Son of a bitch. Yeah, believe it or not. He said uh, he's also an associate of Dr. Hall Putoff. And a name like that makes me just not want to talk to this guy. Uh, who owns the scientific company Earth Tech. Dr. Putoff, of course, has an extensive career in science and uh, the world of intelligence along in the 1970s and 80s. He is an expert on zero-point energy, 
There it goes. There's Reptilian, man. What the fuck else does the Reptilian man talk about? Steven Greer. Zero Point Energy. These guys are all together. If there is a fucking cabal, it's with these guys. Somebody shoot me right now. Somebody shoot me. Is, is it not clear? The cabal is not the fucking cabal is these guys. Bigelow? Two to Stars Academy? Put off? Wilson? All these motherfuckers. I, I can't uh, I can't do that. I can't do it anymore. No so of course, you know, let's get back to it. Put off is uh, Dr. Put off. <laughs> He needs to change his name. Dr. Putoff is an expert in zero-point energy and what is called space-time metric engineering. Woohoo! But of course, Dr. Putoff, he <laughs> he also got yeah, hold on to your hold on to your hats right now. I hope you're not in the shitter because you're gonna blow a good one. Uh, Dr. Putoff is also an integral member of Two of the Stars Academy. I'm gonna let you guys think about what I just said about the cabal. I mean, I mean, like you. Just, I mean, he basically named every Tom, Dick, and Harry that's been dominating UFO news the last three years. This is what I get from this. I don't get that this is the release of this century's biggest UFO news that researchers are going to talk about for decades to come. Because that's what the fuck Richard Dolan said. What I hear is names associated to people that have been rubber dicking us for the last three years, all in one fucking article. And apparently they've been fucking around since 1997. I mean, you can't write this stuff. Did, did, did he even read this? Did somebody help him put this together and say, hey, man, Richard, maybe you shouldn't talk about uh, To the Stars Academy because, you know, they fucked up with that. Uh, with that Mylar penis the incident and stuff. And uh, they took all those millions of dollars. And then they had this, uh, this uh, you know, financial report, you know, that said that they're, they're 4.2 far fucked in the, in the negatives. You know, Richard, shouldn't you not say anything about them? No. I mean, he needs a handler is what he needs. He needs. I know he was excited about this in so many ways. Uh, so apparently, well, basically what the... Uh, the, the premise of this is there is a 15-page note dated October 16, 2002. And uh, it turns out that this is about a meeting that happened in 19... Uh, the information that happened in 1997. But in uh, 2002, Wilson uh, sat down uh, and he arrived uh, at 10 a.m. And the, and the two dudes, you know, they sat in the back of Wilson's car to talk about basically shit that was going down. Yeah, so they talked about Area 51. They talked about Roswell. They talked about alien bodies. They talked about UFOs in a hangar somewhere. How many fucking times have we not seen over the years a UFO sitting in a hangar? I mean, there's even kids' movies. PG movies, G movies that show a UFO in a desert somewhere in a hangar. Independence Day. Everybody saw that movie with Will Smith. Where the fuck was that UFO sitting? In the fucking anger in the middle of the desert. Granted, that one was probably uh, underground somewhere. But still, how many movies do not show a fucking UFO left over for some rubber dicker who crashed it and scientists surrounding it for decades trying to figure out what the fuck is going on? And they still can't. Which really, it's what happened in this particular story. You gotta watch this video. Because in it, it turns out that uh, they throw down, again, Stephen Greer. They throw out names like Dr. Edgar Mitchell. They also throw out U.S. Navy Lieutenant Commander Willard Miller. And it keeps on going. Admiral Michael Crawford. General Patrick Hughes. And it just goes on and on. All talking about secret private enterprises, not government enterprises, private enterprises with limited amount of people being hired to try to figure out a crashed UFO, its technologies, that say it is ready to fly, but they still can't figure out how the fuck to do it. It's it's a fucking movie. We, we, we've heard this in movies time and time again. You've seen them. You've seen these movies with your kids. The link for this particular uh, fucking train wreck 
it's in the uh, the the episode description. I don't know. It it really is upsetting because you know people are going ape shit over the fact that uh, Richard Dolan put this out, but there's no meat behind this. How many? Fuck! If Steven Spielberg can tell you there's a UFO somewhere in the desert, why the fuck is he getting uh getting all this attention? Because other than that, it seems that uh, Spielberg will probably give you a better presentation than Richard Dolan did in these uh, freaking images of this document. And uh, the funny thing is that he also says in this video that they're legitimate, not because so much of who wrote it, but because this particular scientist wrote it would on the back of his mind, thinking it's going to be for a limited audience, not because it was top secret. What the fuck is top secret? Isn't top secret for a limited audience? It's the same shit. At the moment, the Moonraker is going to reserve his opinion, but you, <laughs> I think you already heard it. There's nothing in here. There is nothing in here that's going to move me to say Richard Dolan is a hero. Richard Dolan has just given... All the Peridolia pizza in the world. Something else to look at besides old ass NASA pictures of Mars. So you guys, Peridolia on. You keep looking at old pictures of NASA, uh, moon landings, Mars, Pluto, whatever the fuck you want to look at. Because keep looking somewhere else because don't look at these documents. There's nothing here. There is nothing here for you to see. I would think that with all these names, that with all these names that are listed on this document, that uh, someone as ufology esteemed as Richard Dolan would have reached out to these guys, would have found them, had somebody track them. Bring them to YouTube. Stop fucking around and showing us the document. Fuck the document. Show us the people, the names on this particular document. Let's bring them forward. Cause, hey, they got to be old as fuck right now. Who, you know, deathbed confession. Let's get it. Let's match the deathbed confessions with the damn document. Because right now, you're you're not giving me shit, Richard. I'm sorry. You're just giving us a bunch of hoopla and can no substance. This is Manny Moonraker, UFO Buster Radio. Listen, check out Leon, BB. Don't don't be like that. Check out Leon. I'm telling you, you get that book for 11 bucks and you're going to have so much fucking information. It is going to be amazing. Twitter, at UFO Buster Radio. Facebook, the page is UFO Buster Radio and Manny Moonraker. Go on there. Click on the link that I put in there for Leon BB's book. Check it out. You don't even have to look at my links. Just go to Amazon. It's on Amazon. Go to Amazon. Look for Leon BB. Check out his books. Because number three is coming out. Like I said, you're going to need the first two. And Leon, Leon kind of di- didn't want to agree with me on that, but fuck, he's got so much information in there. Uh, genetics, uh, freaking Bible verses, he, he's got it all in there. You're going to need that shit in order to catch up to number three, because you, you're going to be fucking lost. Don't wait till number three. Go in there, get it. And I guarantee you, you could probably even send him the book, and he'll fucking autograph it for you. Cause he's that kind of guy. He's a cool guy. This is Manny Moore. I'm, I'm checking out. And you know what? Uh, just for a uh, couple of my friends... Who really like this? I I'm, I think I'm starting to feel like uh, like this might be it. This this might be the end of the world. So let's just live like this is the end of the world because uh, fuck Richard Dolan just uh, rubber dicked us all. Peace. Let's go.
Watch the satellites explode.